The UIM F1H20 World Powerboat Championship was in a brand new venue, Figueira de Foz, Portugal, for a sensational double header where rounds two and three were raced back to back. The Grand Prix of Figueira de Foz, followed by the Grand Prix of Portugal, which would decide the 2021 UIM F1H20 World Championship. Located on the Atlantic Silver Coast of Portugal between Lisbon to the south and Porto to the north, Figueira de Foz is a popular seaside resort that attracts tourists year-round with its wide sandy beaches, excellent surf at Cabadelo Beach and endless outdoor attractions, not to mention its famed casino that draws visitors from all over Iberia and beyond. Figueira de Foz is hosting its first ever UIM F1H20 event and will get to root for one of their own with Portuguese racer Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic team, a 22-year veteran of the Tour. It's great, it's amazing uh, to have uh, a race in my own country and with especially two races. It's extra <laughs> exciting and it's fantastic for my sponsors, for my team, but I think it's also fantastic for all the teams, for the F1H20 the championship, it's great for everybody. Now let's see what happened in the last round. At the Grand Prix of Europe in San Nazaro, Italy, rookie Italian driver Alberto Comparato produced a sensational run in the official rebellion qualifying to take surprise pole position. He started off well, leading the race for 15 laps before he had to retire with technical problems. Handing the lead and the race win to Tani Alkamzi of Team Abu Dhabi, with his teammate Sean Torrente runner-up and Sharjah team driver Sami Celio on the podium in third. And so, Daniel Kamzi led the world standings five points up on Sean Torrente and eight points ahead of Sami Celio going into the Figueira de Foz doubleheader. The championship remained wide open as 15 drivers and 10 teams competed in Portugal. The obvious favorites were Team Abu Dhabi's two champion drivers who led the world standings after round one. Veteran Daniel Kamzi was in prime position for a first ever world title in a career spanning over two decades. He's come close before, having been on the year-end podium six times, but that top step has eluded him till now. Finally, this could be his year. Just five points behind his teammate Al Kamzi and gunning for a third consecutive world title in Portugal was the two-time and defending world champion Sean Torrente of the USA. He wanted to make it a hat-trick. This week's going to be really, really, really tough and we just have to overcome it. I mean, there's going to be two qualifying, two races in four days and uh, we have a great team and they're going to work really hard and as drivers we have a lot of laps to put in. So we're going to try to maintain our injury and rest in between um, and just do what we can to be the best that we can every time we're in the boat, and hopefully uh, it's enough to win this championship. Charger team's two-time world champion Sammy Celio was third in the world standings and a strong contender for the top spot. Yeah, it was a decent start for the season there in San Nazaro, and of course uh, we have two more races to go. Championship uh, is open, uh, anything can happen, and it uh, feels like that uh, we have the good setup this year and everything works well. Celio would race with Finnish compatriot Philip Roms and a new addition to Sharjah team, Ferdinand Zanbergen of the Netherlands, who was making his F1 debut in Figueira de Foz. Uh, we test two days, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, that's my only experience for now in the F1 uh, boat. And then here the first few practice uh, felt good. Team Sweden is always a force to be reckoned with, managed and led by former world runner-up and seven-time Grand Prix champion Jonas Andersson. He is a one-man show, builds his own boats, tunes his own engines, does everything himself, and with a limited budget compared to the big teams. He races with Finnish newcomer Kal Levipo. The championship was there for the taking for a talent-packed field with the likes of Peter Marin of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team, Marit Stromoy and Bartek Marshalek of Stromoy Racing, Alec Vekstrom of Gilman Racing, Maverick's French drivers Cedric Deguin and Alexander Bourgeau, 
not to mention round one pole winner Alberto Comparato. The 1.7 kilometer circuit on the Mondego River in Figuera de Foz featured six turn buoys on a tight, fast course, including a yellow right-hander with challenging conditions expected. It's a very fast race course here, a lot of G-forces, so it, it's hard. You need to be cross your fingers and hope everything goes smoothly and uh, you get the results end of the day. In the official qualifying for the first race, three qualifying rounds to determine the starting lineup and pole position. The top 12 in Q1 qualified for Q2, where the fastest six boats then moved up to Q3, where they each got two laps and the course to themselves to lay their fastest lap times in the quest for pole position. Newcomer Zanbergen laid a great lap to book his place in Q3. Impressive feat for the rookie. Uh, very happy because I was not expecting uh, that I uh, was uh, able to get in the top six uh, for my first uh, Formula One race. Daniel Kamsi was off the pace and unable to take a place in the shootout. Jonas Anderson laid down a flawless lap, absolutely determined to make up for his string of bad luck. Celia was out last and he was fast, but he could not beat Anderson. The Swedish ace wins his sixth career pole position with a record-breaking lap time, putting him in prime position for the Grand Prix of Figuera de Foge. I have been uh, working constantly since uh, Sanasaro with all the engines everything. Incredible uh, good to have the pool position for tomorrow because it's going to be very, very difficult to, to overtake. And uh, if you can lead into the first lap, for sure, it's very important. Torrente in P2, Celio starting third on the pontoon, then Stromoy, Sandbergen and Marin, with Alcamzi back in ninth behind Jonas Anderson's teammate Kalle Vipo and Duarte Benevente starting in 11th. Crowds in their thousands gathered along the banks of the Rio Mondego for the Grand Prix of Figuera de Foge. Anderson hoping to capitalize on his pole position, Alcamzi looking to solidify his world standings lead in the penultimate race, and Sean Torrente looking for his third straight win in Portugal since 2018. The final seconds before the race, teams carefully aimed their boats toward the commitment buoy. And there they go, 15 drivers launch off the start pontoon. Jonas Anderson in pole has an excellent start, leaving the field behind right out of the gate. Peter Marin also rips ahead, leaves Zandberg and squeezed out in a spray. Maritz Stromoy has an excellent start as she pulls away from Sammy Celio on the opening sprint before the first turn buoy. Anderson is comfortably through to the commitment buoy with Sean Torrente behind him in second. Sammy Celio tries to hold on to third, but Moritz Stromoy is going strong on the outside, pushing the Sharjah team ace to the limit. Stromoy is half a boat's length ahead in third, Celio fourth, Peter Marin in fifth, Zandberg in sixth, and Alkamzi in seventh. Anderson comes through the crucial starting phase with lead intact as he settles in, but now he has to stave off the hard racing American Sean Torrente of Team Abu Dhabi. Meanwhile, the duel continues between Stromoy and Celio as Stromoy shuts the Finnish two-time world champion out at the yellow right-hand buoy. Daniel Kamsi knows he needs points to shore up his chances as he rises from 9th to 7th and then locks horns with Zandbergen for 6th place, but the Dutch rookie holds off the veteran Emirati as they come around the yellow buoy. Further back, Alberto Comparato in 8th is chased by Sharjah team's Philip Roms. And then it's a three-way fight for 10th between Bartek Marshalek, Duarte Benevente and Kalle Vipo. Team Mavericks, Alexander Bourgeot, 13th ahead of Cedric de Guin. Portuguese hopeful Benevente pulls ahead of Marshalek, as does Kale Vipo on the inside in the red team Sweden boat, and Vipo maintains his lead into the turn to move up into 10th, Benevente 11th. Bartek Marshalek breaks down in the next lap, he's out of the race. Sami Celio in fourth position, he tries to fend off aggressive CTI CF1 China racer Peter Marin, who's trying to wrest fourth from Celio. Sean Torrente is going strong in second. He knows second place will give him all the points he needs without a potentially risky push for first. 
Stromoy in third is in podium position, but just behind her is the ongoing dogfight for fourth between Celio and Marin, then Zandbergen in sixth, and then round one winner Tani Alkamzi in seventh, trying to climb up, knowing every point is crucial. Marin and Celio neck and neck going into the turn. Marin cuts in hard to beat out Celio, but the Finnish ace has the speed on the outside, and Celio hangs on to fourth. Celio then zeroes in on Moritz Stromoy in third, but gets caught in her spray and he loses his rear view mirror. Celio in fighting spirit, holding off Marin, chasing down Stromoy, trying to crack the top three. Peter Marin is not backing down. He tries to slip on the inside past Celio yet again the next lap, but Celio staves off the Frenchman. Trouble for Celio. The intensity of the fight proves too much for his engine as Celio makes a disappointing exit just seven laps into the race. The yellow flag comes out to clear Celio's boat off the circuit. As the field bunches up, Jonas Anderson's team looks on nervously as the race resumes. Anderson holds on to his lead. Behind him, Peter Marin attacks Moritz Stromoy in a bid for third, but Stromoy holds off the hard charging Frenchman. Peter Marin is going all out, careening down the straightaway, pushing his boat to the max, trying to catch Stromoy. Marin stays wide, cuts in hard. He just beats Stromoy to the next buoy, but does he have the speed? He does. Marin charges ahead, overhauling Stromoy to his starboard. Peter Marin cracks the top three as Stromoy falls back. It's a big battle at the back between veteran Atlantic F1 driver Benevente and the young Italian newcomer Alberto Comparato as the two lock horns in a fight for eighth position. Benevente trying to find a gap through on the inside, but Comparato holds the Portuguese driver off. Up in fifth in his very first UIM F1 H2O race is Ferdinand Zandbergen in the number 71 Charger boat. What a race from the young Dutchman. Out in the lead since the very first second in the race is Jonas Anderson. All he has to do is maneuver through the traffic of the back markers. Torrente keeps up the chase in second, but doesn't push too hard, knowing a breakdown and zero points exit would be disaster to his hopes for a third world championship. The final lap, and Jonas Anderson does it. A brilliant pole position to take 20 points and declare himself in the running for the world championship too. Torrente second, an excellent race result for Peter Marin, who comes in third, and Moritz Stromoy in fourth. Yeah, it was very nice to win this race because we had a very bad one in uh, in Italy, and I felt that I had the, had the, the time back to Sean, so and uh, he was not pushing me so hard. So if if he come closer, for sure I can uh, step up little. So I'm really happy. Oh yeah, man, that was an awesome race. It was so much fun. Morin was faster than us, but uh, we just uh, I used a little bit of moxie and uh, a lot of experience and uh, kept him behind. And uh, honestly, I think we had something for Jonas, but it's just not worth the risk for the championship. We were happy to finish second, like I told you. Now we work uh, for qualifying for tomorrow and take the last step. Pleasant race because uh, uh, we can overtake some uh, boats and uh, fight with uh, the podium. So uh, it was really, really pleasant. But Peter Marin's joy was short-lived as he was given a one-lap post-race penalty for veering into Sandbergen's lane at the start. That penalty gave Stromoy third place on the podium with Ferdinand Zandbergen an impressive fourth place in his very first F1 race, Daniel Kamsi fifth for a crucial seven points, Kalevipo sixth, Marin bumped down to seventh after the penalty, and also in the points to complete the top ten, Comparato, Benevente and Vekstrom. The day's racing over, the F1 drivers and their teams were hosted to a gala dinner event where the podium ceremony took place amid celebrations of a fantastic round two. for the Grand Prix of Portugal, where the pontoon starting lineup and the all-important pole position would be decided. 
Marit Stromoy was looking to capitalize on her last minute podium points. A great race. Peter did an amazing job, and uh, but uh, I, I was uh, a bit lucky to get on the podium, but the podium is good, and uh, now we're looking for a new one. In Q2, Alec Beckstrom had a great run to make it into Q3 after being disappointed in the previous qualifier. Team Abu Dhabi was struggling throughout Q2, and then disaster! Sean Torrente broke his engine, and that meant he had to start at the back of the pack with his world title hopes in serious trouble. Unfortunately, we broke the engine. It was brand new, just the way it goes. I haven't had a failure in three years, so it happens. It happens to everybody. This time, unfortunately, it was at the worst possible time, but it's the way it goes. Jonas Anderson, on the other hand, was on a roll from his round two win, keeping his head in the game and laying another phenomenal lap in Q3. Sammy Celio came close, but no cigar. Jonas Anderson gets a second back-to-back -back pole position and is one step closer to possibly winning his first world championship. Celio P2, Peter Marin P3, Vekstrom fourth, Comparato fifth, world title hopefuls Alcamzi sixth and Torrente tenth, but he will have to start in 14th just ahead of Cal Levipo because of an engine change. <laughs> Round three, the Grand Prix of Portugal, the final race of the season, the 2021 World Championship decider. Torrente has a three-point lead over Alcamzi in the overall standings, but he starts at the back, and if Anderson can pull off another win from pole, he may just snatch the world title from the Team Abu Dhabi favorites. We have a big race today. Fight until end. We gotta start last, just like old times. You remember those times? They were usually pretty fun. Let's see if we can do it again. Huh? The final seconds before the final race of 2021, the crucial start. And it's game on. Another brilliant start from Jonas Anderson as he flies ahead in pole position. Also, great start for Alec Vekstrom of Gilman Racing in P4 as he pulls ahead of Peter Marin. Rough start for Sammy Salio in P2. He falls back on the starting straightaway. Vekstrom is boats lengths ahead of Marin. Anderson is first to the commitment buoy as the field comes around with Vekstrom in second. Further out, Murat Stromoy charges ahead of the field and cuts in for the turn as Duarte Benavente gets lost in her spray and nearly hits the rocks. Here it is again, Stromoy up from ninth, shutting the Portuguese driver out and he nearly shreds his boat on the rocks but manages to save it at the last second. Another perfect start for race leader Anderson. Beckstrom in second, Celio just behind but with the inside late advantage. And then it's Alberto Comparato, followed by Peter Marin, who locks horns with Dani Alcamzi. Alcamzi needs to finish the race in second and ahead of Torrente to guarantee the championship. He's driving with a mission, passing Marin to move up to fifth in a bid to realize his dream of winning a first ever world title. Sammy Celio is neck and neck with his fellow Finn Vekstrom, but Celio's inside lane pays off as he slips through and back into second position. Vekstrom now third. Local hopeful Duarte Benevente of F1 Atlantic is in last place, but moving up on Bartek Marsalek and Calevipo. It's a three-way fight between Marshalek, Benevente and Vipo, with Marshalek pulling ahead on the inside, Benevente trailing Vipo. As positions stand now, Anderson is on track for a first-ever world title, while Alcamzi needs to get up to second and Torrente needs to get to third. Meanwhile, Alcamzi continues to climb up, he and Marin both passing Comparato, Alcamzi in fourth. Further back, incredible run from Sean Torrente, who has blazed his way from 14th up into 8th position already at the end of lap 1. Torrente finds himself just behind Stromoy, and behind the American are Sharja teammates Ferdinand Zandbergen and Philip Roms. Torrente has to keep moving up as he sets his sights on Stromoy, ducking and weaving, looking for a way past the Norwegian. On that long straightaway, Torrente moves out for some clean water to pick up speed before he cuts in tight on the turn to try and slip through on the inside of Stromoy. But Stromoy shuts the American out. 
Torrente is in his element. He loves a chase and he loves a challenge. He is relishing this as he takes the fight to Stromoy. On lap three, Stromoy overhauls Comparato in the 97 boat to take sixth at the yellow buoy. Torrente is keeping up right behind her. He guts in hard, wastes no time as he passes Comparato and moves into seventh. As both Team Abu Dhabi drivers, Torrente and Alkamzi make their way up the field, eliminating boat after boat between them and Anderson, all the Swedish race leader can do is keep going and focus on maintaining that lead. Torrente keeping up the pressure on Stromoy as he goes out wide yet again on a third attempt to pass the Norwegian. Torrente slips through, the American does it, he gets past Stromoy and continues to climb up, but there's still a ways to go. Anderson in command of the race, Sammy Celio in second position, then Beckstrom third, Alcamzi in fourth, Marin fifth, Torrente sixth, Stromoy seventh, Comparato eighth, Philip Roms in ninth. But Philip Roms exits the race with technical issues in lap nine, and he's towed back in. Good racing from Anderson's Team Sweden teammate, Kalle Vipo, who goes from the back of the field to move up into ninth position and in the points. Solid comeback from the Finnish youngster. The nerves are showing in Team Sweden as only two boats now remain between Anderson and the Team Abu Dhabi drivers, Celio and Vekstrom, all that stands in Torrente and Alcamzi's way. Torrente still has a lot of work to do as he has to finish ahead of Alcamzi, but he remains stuck behind the tough Peter Marin in fifth, who stands in the American's way. Alcamzi also still needs to move up another two spots if he's to beat both Anderson and Torrente to the world title. But what a great race so far for Alec Vekstrom, who holds the fate of the championship in his hands, although he himself is surely only focused on getting a podium finish in the number 66 Gilman Racing boat. While positions remain the same lap after lap, Anderson forced to slow down in the traffic, and his biggest challenge now will be negotiating through the back markers and their spray in the roughening waters of the Rio Mondego. Anderson laps Stromoy Racing's Bartek Marshalek, while Marshalek's teammate Stromoy is in seventh by lap 30. But Stromoy gets too much air under the hull and she flips over. That's a huge crash out. All spray rescue team are quick to her aid and she's okay. That brings out the yellow flag, which means Anderson's lead is suddenly cut down and this is the chance the Abu Dhabi Teamsters have been waiting for. Here it is again, increasing winds and choppiness makes it difficult to keep the boat on the water down those fast straights. Bad luck for the Norwegian. The green flag goes up in lap 35. The bunched up field storms off into the turn. Celio in second and he barrel rolls in the rough. And he's uninjured. Here's the replay. Celio leads into the turn but leaves no room for Vekstrom who is on the inside. He strikes Celio and Celio is out of the race. In the mayhem behind the leaders, Benevente crashes into Comparato who is also out. It's a string of exits as Celio joins Comparato and Maverick racer Cedric de Guin back at the pontoon. Miraculously, Vekstrom appears completely unscathed and maintains second position through the whole ordeal. If Vekstrom had been out too, Alkamzi would be in second and on track for the world title. And so one man's fortune is another man's cruel blow, as there is no time left for a restart. Jonas Anderson is the Grand Prix of Portugal winner and the 2021 UIM F1H2O world champion. After 15 years on the tour and just missing out on the world title in 2019, this time he does it. Cruel blow for Alcamzi, misses out by just one position and one point as he finishes third behind Beckstrom and Torrente fifth behind Marin, his hopes for a hat-trick gone. Great result for Cadle Vipo in sixth, Marshall X seven, points for Portuguese driver Benevente in eight. I was hoping for a podium after we qualified fourth. I got a really good start. I jumped straight to second. And then on the first straight, Sami was inside. I didn't want to destroy his chances of the championship, so I left the door open for turn two. It's good, you know, this was the first race. We get to start where we qualify, and we showed we have strong pace even in the race with the others. So it's good for next year. 
try my best to get uh, second place, but uh, this is from the, the God. I'm happy for third. Inshallah, next year we try fast, uh, fight uh, more for winning uh, world champion. In the team championship standings, Team Abu Dhabi wins by 26 points. Team Sweden is second and Stromoy racing in third. CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team fourth. And Jonas Anderson takes the UIM F1 H2O World Championship for 2021. Fanny Alcamzi runner-up by just one point with Sean Torrente on the year-end podium for a seventh time in the last eight seasons. Jonas Anderson finally crowned world champion. Oh, it was a blast. It was so much fun. We started last, finished fifth, and uh, on that restart, we were up to third, and we thought we had a chance. And uh, I'm just really proud of what we've done and, and look forward to next year. And uh, so hopefully we can get that number one back. But uh, congrats to Jonas. He did a great job this week. I had a very good start, and then it was just to try to pull away, and I get a gap, and then I try to save the engine, but uh, then they close the gap. So it was just go full speed. It's fantastic. That's been a fantastic week here in, in Portugal, and I'm so happy that we got the money to, to come down here and the friends helping, and uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And so the 2021 season comes to a close. See you in 2022 for a spectacular 38th UIM F1H2O World Powerboat Championship.